Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Alexandra. I am the owner at Digital Pattern Library and a professional fashion designer, pattern cutter, and creative consultant. What my aim is here is to help you design, draft, make, and most importantly, wear your dream wardrobe that makes you feel great. Today's workshop, if you know me, you know I love jumping into the value, has been requested time and time again by people who have taken my three day design challenge. Now, if you don't know what that is, four times a year, I host this beginner friendly and lighthearted experience where I teach industry standard design techniques that are so easy to follow. It's high energy, it's fast paced, and it's a lot of fun. Think of it like an online project runway, except you don't have to make anything. It's all about visual communication and coming up with original ideas. So today is all about color rendering in Photoshop. Now, I know that this is a little bit more advanced, but I encourage you to watch it anyway, even if you don't see yourself as someone with Photoshop or a graphics tablet, you might pick up some aha tips and tricks along the way. This has been hotly requested by all of those that have attended the three day design challenge. And the reason I render my designs in this way is because it's really quick and time effective and the result is quite strong and powerful. So what I would say is trust the process. <laughs> We're going to jump straight into it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. And I'll catch you at the end of the video with a really exciting invite to send your way. So I've already filmed a video on this initial step consisting of separating the background, enhancing the line quality and contrast and getting it to the stage ready for color and textile rendering. So by all means, pause this video, pop on over there and give it a watch. And then you can come back to this to continue. So I start by scanning in my hand drawn sketches and enhancing the line drawing by separating it from the background. I increase the contrast and this really gives me a high quality line template to work from on its own layer. Obviously, you can achieve the same result by pieing off pencil and paper and simply digitally rendering your line drawings on a Photoshop layer using your desired graphics tablet if you so wish. I use a Wacom Intuos Pro, but my laptop is also a touch screen and I have a stylus to go with that. And then of course you have Procreate and iPads as digital alternatives. I start by selecting my skin layer. You're gonna see that I have created multiple layers and I have named them appropriately. So we have skin, texture, color, meaning color of the clothing and line, meaning my line drawing. So using the color panel and the brush tool, which is B as a shortcut, as a keyboard shortcut, I am just going to go ahead and select a generic skin tone. Really obviously doesn't matter which you decide to choose. And it also doesn't matter if you go over the edges. So I've selected the skin layer and I am starting to color that in. So if you go over the edges, you can reorder your layers to toggle visibility, which is why I've created multiple separate layers. So the skin layer can sit below the color of the clothing layer, ensuring that the edges neaten up and so on. And you can toggle the details layer on top of the clothing layer. You can make as many as you like and just find a process that works for you. I do always make sure that my line layer is first, which means it is top of the list on that window you can see to the right of the screen, unless for design reasons, such as adding buttons or design details dictates otherwise, therefore they would be above the line layer. So I've selected a skin tone and I proceed to color in the appropriate areas. You're gonna notice that I do an outline first before selecting the paint bucket tool, which is command or control and the letter G. And then I, that helps me fill in the area. So you must ensure that the correct layer is selected and the area that you wish to fill is an enclosed space. Otherwise, what you'll, what you'll see will happen is you accidentally color in the entire page. So if you're trying to fill an area of your work with color, you really need to make sure that you have outlined that area and closed off that shape. And I know you're probably thinking that this is a lineup that lacks severe diversity, but once I've rendered the colors and textiles of my clothing designs later in this video, you'll see me then go back to my skin layer and I apply a more representative range of skin tones. And this way, once I've designed my clothes and picked my colors and created my lineup, I can ensure that each model complements the look and it's kind of like a digital artistic casting. As you've just seen, I toggle between my mood board to draw colors and textures from it. So using the eyedropper tool, which is command or control plus the letter I, 
Yes, I know that eyedropper starts with an E, <laughs> but E is the erase tool, so it is what it is. Using the eyedropper tool, I pull colors from my mood board and repeat the process to color in areas of my designs. Now, I don't tend to outline and fill small areas using the paint bucket tool. I just simply color them in as I would with a pencil and a piece of paper. As you know, part of this creative brief was to incorporate Pantone's color of the year for 2024, which is peach fuzz. So you're gonna see me place this swatch into the workspace, allowing me to color match this component of the design brief. This was a great challenge for all of us who enrolled. And even though we all produced work incorporating this color, people's palettes were really different with some using it as a main feature, others just applied it in design details such as linings or trims. Of course, the garment styles that we were designing differed greatly as well, but it's always such a treat to see how you fellow creatives interpret the design brief each time. And it really does make my decision of prize giving and awarding the winners very, very difficult. You'll also notice I apply certain design elements to the file that I end up changing further down the line and one of the joys digitally enhancing my design work brings is the flexibility to swap colours, textures and ideas with a simple click. So this is why when I am short on time I really do incorporate Photoshop and technology into my creative process. So as I toggle back to my mood board, I decided to put a pin in leading with peach fuzz and start mapping out larger areas of texture and color. I pulled this striped linen textile from my research and I pasted it into the workspace. As a quick recap, to copy an element is control, command and C before pasting it with control or command and V. You'll notice that placing or pasting an image creates a new layer, so you might want to rename this, but Lazy McGee over here didn't bother. <laughs> and in the same train of thought, I also could have created a repeat print, but again, as you can see here, I'm just choosing to duplicate the same swatch time and time again, line up the lines, and it's relatively seamless, enough for me to visually communicate my idea. I'm then using the erase tool, which is E, then erasing the areas of this swatch that I don't want to spill over the line work. So it's almost like a reverse of coloring in. I'm actually now just trying to highlight the negative space and contain the swatch to the area I desire. You're gonna see I'm able to toggle the layer and there are multiple options under this drop down menu in your layers panel. You'll see that I click multiply, you can darken, lighten, all of that. So that's a really fun one to play around with as well. But because I have my layers set up the way I do, as long as the line layer again is on the top then I'm just using that as a guide on where I want to contain this swatch. An alternative method would be to utilize the pen or lasso tool and create a mask layer to fill it with your desired textile or pattern but again this is simply my I won't even say preferred I'll just use the term current method of doing things my creative process, as yours should be as well, is always changing, it's exploring, and it continues along a learning path. And at the moment, I've settled on this as part of my creative process, but the best thing about fashion and art is to build your own rules. So whilst I hope that this tutorial is offering some tips on using Photoshop in relation to garment design, I really encourage you to leave a comment below regarding your tips, tricks, and hacks as well. So I just grouped all the layers that included my stripe textile swatch to neaten up my panel and workspace. To do this, you just simply highlight the layers that you wish to bundle together, right click and group will be an option from the menu. Again, if you want to rename the folder to help you keep things in order, feel free to do that. Evidently, I choose chaos. So revisiting my mood board, I simply repeat the process and I pull textures and images to apply to my designs. It's worth noting that if you want to manipulate the image file you've placed or embedded, you can use the transform function by clicking command or control and the letter T. This allows you to rotate the selected image and you can scale it up or down. Again, I place this pulled scale effect over my desired area, but I ensure that it lies a little larger outside of the line drawing. So then I can go back in and erase the edges to neaten everything up. Top tip to toggle the size of your eraser or brush point. That was really hard to say. Top tip to toggle. Say that five times fast. But <laughs> top tip to toggle the size is to press the left or right squared bracket. Left will reduce the size of the nib or the space and area that you're going to erase. And right will increase the size of your brush size or eraser area. 
So I'm going to speed up this next section because I'm still applying the same kind of techniques and methods to input this knit into my cardigan design. You will notice as we go through this the power that adding texture and colour has to a lineup. You might have seen my drawings at the beginning and you might be thinking, God, they're so ugly. <laughs> and if you're still thinking, God, they're so ugly, totally fine. Design and fashion is subjective. But they really do transform the overall aesthetic when you see the final lineup at the end. So I'm just going to speed up this next part that duplicates what I've just gone through and taught you. You will notice that I am erasing certain areas of this knitted swatch just so that the accent Pantone peach fuzz colour can peek through. So again, if you're trying to erase something and you're not getting the results, then just revert back to your layers panel and check that everything is arranged in the correct order for you to get the result that you want. Does anyone else find hyperlapse videos incredibly calming and therapeutic? No, just me. <laughs> anyway, eagle-eyed observers may have noticed I changed the trousers on the end of this lineup from green to beige. And again, this is such a testament and pro of digitally rendering designs, as I can swap out colours for more complementary combinations. Wow, <laughs> what is with my alliteration skills in this video? What you are seeing here is me placing and embedding PNG file files of pearls. Um, again, this is a design detail and it has been influenced by my research from the three day design challenge, which I teach you how to do yourself. Uh, but unlike all the other layers in this workshop, I am placing these above my line layer so that I'm giving thought to the composition of this design file to enhance the final lineup. 
Skipping forward to the end then, I'm finishing off this person's feet, which I seem to have missed, and I'm toggling back to my skin layer to incorporate some diversity as mentioned at the start of the video. Just like hosting a casting, I can choose which outfits complement which tone. If you've ever done seasonal colour analysis, which is something we cover inside the DPL Atelier, then this is a similar principle in understanding what colours work for your unique complexion. Personally, as a light spring, I'm someone who is advised to steer away from dark colours and high contrast. So should you implement these tips into your own creative process, you may find it useful to assess which outfit from your lineup would be most complimentary to add to your wardrobe. Because ultimately we're trying to design clothes that we will actually wear at the end of the day, that is the goal. But that being said, <laughs> the shearling jacket and the cocktail dress, the black cocktail dress, whilst not my colours, they do feel like my vibe. I'm feeling this kind of casual rocker chick energy. So let me know what your favourite look from this lineup is in the comments. I am a thick skinned gal and if you don't like them, that's fine. But be kind. Whenever we share our creative work with the world, it is an extension of ourselves. And I completely understand and say this all the time to my three day design challenges that it is a vulnerable place to be. So use and abuse me. Let me know your thoughts. I am here for it. To finish off the presentation of my work then, I use the dodge and burn tool to add depth and shadows. Now understanding how to apply shadows is a workshop all on its own, like which I'd be happy to share with you in terms of visual communication in a future video. But ultimately it comes down to knowing where your light source is coming from and keeping it consistent. So you can select the burn tool by clicking O on your keyboard and apply it just like the brush in areas you wish to darken up. This really adds a nice depth and dynamic just to kind of round off your visual communication and designs. Again, I might sound like a broken record, but make sure that you've selected the correct layer. So if I want to apply shadows to the figures, as I do on the face to highlight the cheekbones and the nose and the mouth, then I need to select the skin layer. And to apply shadows to the textures like the cardigan, I need to select the image layer or the group. And then to darken the areas of the plain colors, I select the color layer. So I really hope that that makes sense. So there we are. I really hope that you enjoyed that workshop. Maybe bookmark this video for a later time. Like and subscribe. I always love a little plug of my channel at the end there. But the really exciting invite that I promised you was our Atelier Versary. Now, if you don't know about the DPL Atelier, this is my high value, low cost fashion membership. And we are celebrating three whole years around the sun. I can't believe it. And to celebrate, I am throwing the doors wide open to you. So you do not have to be a member to come and join. It is a totally free creative weekend experience on the 17th and 18th of February. We are going to be having giveaways, treasure hunts, online games. And of course, you can access exclusive online tutorials that my members get to see. But I'm going to be able to share those with you over the weekend for 24 hours each day only. So if you want to RSVP, if you want to come and join us, there's going to be some member mixer calls, there's going to be live Q and A's, it's all happening in a short space of time. Make sure you RSVP, click the link down below, read the caption, read all of the good stuff and click the link to have an explore. And I really, really, really hope to see you inside the Atelier to continue this creative journey. For now, stay safe, keep creative, and I will catch you on the flip side.